Hey guys, welcome to my channel, Investing Untangled. Hope you're all doing well. On this channel, I post videos about stock market research and detailed stock analysis, and also educational videos about stock market investment. And if this is something that interests you, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell and follow my content here. In this video, I'll show you how to do the discounted cash flow calculation yourself in an Excel sheet. And I'll go through the step-by-step -step calculation and I'll show you how you can build a DCF Excel calculator for yourself. I made a whole video previously explaining all the calculations. So I'm leaving that link in the description below for you to check out. So briefly, discounted cash flow is one of the best ways to value a company. And here is the definition. Discounted cash flow is a valuation method used to estimate the value of an investment based on its expected future cash flows. So what you do is you basically estimate the future cash flows and then discount them back to their present value. So what those future cash flows will look like in today's money. And that's basically what discounted cash flow is. This is the formula for calculating discounted cash flow. And I explained this formula and also the calculation behind it in this previous video that I did. So you should check that out if you want to understand all the details. So based on that last video, I got a few requests in the comments where people ask that I should put together an Excel sheet and show them how you can actually build your own Excel sheet for doing discounted cash flow. And that's what I'm gonna do in this video. To start with, the required numbers for discounted cash flow are number one, discount rate. Briefly, it is the required rate of return. The higher the discount rate, the lower will be the intrinsic value. So the higher the discount rate is, the more conservative you will be. You should always have a discount rate higher than the risk-free rate that is, for example, given to you by US Treasury bonds, where you're not taking any risk and that rate of return is guaranteed to you. But if you're investing in stocks, that means you're taking some risk. So you should expect a higher rate of return. So you should always have a discount rate higher than the risk-free rate. I generally use a 10%, which is pretty good. The next thing that we need is the future growth rate. Because I told you, you have to estimate future cash flows going forward. That means you need a future growth rate at which you estimate those cash flows. So this will be the rate that you think the company will be growing at in future. And the final thing that you need is the perpetual growth rate. And this means this is the rate of return at which you think the company will be growing in perpetuity. And what that means is that, for example, you estimated your cash flows for the next five years or 10 years, but that doesn't mean that your company will not produce any cash cash flows after 10 years, but it's just hard to estimate those uh, cash flows after, let's say, 10 years. So what you do is you become very conservative and you reduce the growth rate to something like 2 or 3%, which is being extremely conservative. I'll be using a discount rate of 10% a future growth rate of 15% and a perpetual growth rate of 3%. So let's get started. Now here I'll give you a real example of a company. I'll check the intrinsic value of Google. So here are the metrics that I showed to you that I'll be using and this is what you need for the discounted cash flow. So to start with, you look up the current free cash flow of your company. For Google, at the end of 2020, the free cash flow was 42,843 million meaning $42.8 billion. So everything here is in millions. So I'm gonna leave it like this. And now what we do is we actually using a future growth rate of 15% that I got from analysts at Yahoo Finance, I'll use this future growth rate to estimate what my future cash flows will look like. So using this 15%, my 2021 cash flow will be $49,269 million, meaning $49 billion. And if you see the formula, it's basically the current cash flow, the current free cash flow multiplied by 15%, which is the growth rate, the future growth rate, plus the same free cash flow from that year. So it's here, B3 is present free cash flow. You multiply it by 15%, meaning 0.15 and then you add the same free cash flow back to it, meaning you're increasing it by 15%. So the next year, using 15% growth, free cash flow will be 49 billion. And you do it the same way for the next years as well. So for 2022, you will add 15% to this, and that will make it 56,660 million, meaning 56 billion. And then you'll do the same thing here, 
add another 15%, that'll make it to 65,159 million, meaning 65 billion. And you'll repeat it all the way until 2025. So in this example, I'm estimating the future cash flows for the next five years. If you understand the company really well, and if you are confident that the company will keep the present growth rate and it will continue to grow at this rate, you can estimate future cash flows all the way up to 10 years. So it depends on your understanding of the company, but generally five years is a pretty good estimation. And after five years, what you do is you figure out the terminal value. And the way you do that is by using this perpetual growth rate of 3% here in this example. And the formula for that is you basically take this one, the last free cash flow that you estimated for your last year, and in this example, it's year five, you multiply this by one plus 3%, meaning one plus 0 0.03, and then you divide it by discount rate minus perpetual growth rate, meaning 10% minus 3%, so 0 0.1, minus 0 0.03. That'll give you your terminal value. Like I said, terminal value meaning Google will be basically still increasing its cash flows and this will be what the final number will look like. So this is the first step, estimating these free cash flows for the next five years or so and getting the terminal value. The next step is to find the discount factor. And the way you find the discount factor is by using this discount rate. And in this case, we are using the discount rate of 10%. So again, remember discount rate is the rate of your return, the return that you want on your investment. So if you want a 15% rate of return, you can use a discount rate of 15%. And here I'm using Excel in the European format. So all the decimals are denoted by a comma. So it's not a dot, by, but a comma. So now the formula for discount factor calculation is for the first year, you will take one plus 10%, so 10% being your discount rate. So one plus your discount rate of 10% for the first year. The second year will be one plus 10% again, the discount rate, but this time raised to the power of two. For the second year, it is raised to the power of two. For the third year, again, one plus 10%, but this time raised to the power of three. For the fourth year, one plus 10% raised to the power of four. And for the fifth year, one plus 10% raised to the power of five. The terminal value should stay just like this, the last discount factor that you calculated for your last year, meaning 2025. So it will stay one plus 10% raised to the power of five, meaning it will be the same here. So now you figured the discount factors. So you have the future cash flows, and now you have to find the value of these cash flows in today's money. And you will use this discount factor to discount these future cash flows and bring them back to today's money. The way you'll do that is by dividing each free cash flow from each year by the respective discount factor. So for 2021, it will be 49 billion divided by 1.10. For the next year, it will be this value here divided by 1.21. For the year after, for 2023, it will be this divided by this and so on. And that's what you do also for the terminal value. You divide this free cash flow by the discount factor. So now what you got here is the present value of all these future cash flows. And now the next step is to sum all of them up here. So here, this is the combined present value of future free cash flows. So all these present value of these future cash flows are summed together. And this is the value for that. And now this is for the entire company, for the whole Google company. So on a per share basis, you just divide this by the shares outstanding, by the number of shares that are outstanding for that company. And for Google, it is 733 million shares outstanding. So you divide this value by this, and that will give you the intrinsic value of the stock, which is $1,409 for Google. So please remember, I have actually rounded these figures off and I have removed the decimals, except for these values here where it is important. Intrinsic value is also called the fair value. So you can say that it, this is the fair value of Google. And then since this is all based on estimations and future growth rate, and it can happen that you know, you're wrong somewhere. So what you do is you take some kind of margin of safety. 
In the Intelligent Investor book by Benjamin Graham, he suggests a margin of safety of 50%. I generally take a margin of safety of 30%, so it depends on you. If you want to take a margin of safety of 50%, you would basically divide this by two, and that would be your buy price. I generally go with a margin of safety of 30%, which is fine for me and for my own investments. So what I did here now is that I took the 30% of uh, this. So 30% of $1,409 is $423. So you can see here, this multiplied by 30% gives me this number here, $423. And what I do then is I subtract $423 from this. So 1409 minus 423 will give me 986 and this will be my buy price and at the time of recording this video google is trading at over two thousand dollars so clearly google is expensive at these prices and i do not want to buy google at these prices so it is trading at a premium right now so this is how you can set up a discounted cash flow calculator for yourself please let me know in the comments below if something was not clear i'll try to clarify that i and hope you got some useful information out of this video please consider leaving a like and subscribe to this channel investing untangled i'll be bringing in more informational videos like this and also detailed business and stock analysis so stay tuned to my channel and i'll see you in my next video